Welcome everyone to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and I'm gonna introduce my co-host today, the Apple 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 processor. This is one of Apple's first computers to run on Apple Silicon. It's M1 processor alongside the 13-inch MacBook Air and the new Mac Mini. In this video, we are going to be taking this thing for a spin. We are going to be throwing a ton of benchmarks at it, comparing how it does, listening for those fans on this thing, seeing when they spin up, what the body temperature gets to when it is under load, just a pile of tests. And we're gonna be comparing them to like five other machines. We have a ton of stuff to compare, a ton of stuff to talk about. So let's go hands-on and benchmarking and thermals for Apple's M1 13-inch MacBook Pro. Like I said, we're gonna be comparing this M1 MacBook Pro against several other machines. In fact, six other recent Macs. We're going to be comparing our 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 to a Core 3 2018 Mac Mini, a Core i7 2018 Mac Mini, a Core i7 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro, a Core i9 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro, and a Core i9 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro, as well as my Xeon W3223 8-core processor in 2019 Mac Pro. So you basically have the entire gamut there from a Mac Mini to multiple MacBook Pros all the way up to the ridiculous Mac Pro Tower. So let's go ahead and start off with the Geekbench benchmark. To be clear, these are not sourced online. These are from our own machines from the Apple Insider staff. So we have run all of these benchmarks across all of our machines and compiled the results here. You're not gonna find these numbers anywhere else. So looking at the Geekbench 5 results on the single core, the MacBook Pro with the M1 processor beat every Mac out there, and it did so by a good amount. It scored almost a 1250, and the next one in there was around an 1100. But that was when it was using emulation using Rosetta 2. When we re-ran the test with the native M1 version of Geekbench, holy smokes that single core score skyrocketed. It scored around a 1700 on that single core test with the native version of Geekbench. That is incredible to see the optimizations that software can have and how powerful it can be when it is optimized for that M1 processor. So a huge jump there looking at the Geekbench single core test. Looking at the multi-core test, the 15 or the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 processor was only bested by our Tower Mac Pro, which honestly, I kind of hope that it would be. I mean, it's a freaking Tower Mac Pro, and it's those multi-core tests that that thing is really gonna crush. Apple has specifically optimized that M1 processor for these portable machines, low power, great power efficiency, and great speed on the single core task. So it does drag slightly in multi-core, only coming in second place. The next machine would have been that 16 inch MacBook Pro, and it was just a little bit below the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro. But that is still crazy that it did that well on the multi-core test, and obviously we know it blew us away on that single core test. The next benchmark that we moved on to is Cinebench R23. The R23 version, that release 23 version of Cinebench has been natively optimized for Apple's M1 processor. So that is the one that we're using across the board. The multi-core results fare similarly with the M1 appearing in the top half of the table with 7691 points, narrowly beating the Core i7 Mac Mini. Again, it's beaten by the Mac Pro, though this time the Core i9 6-inch MacBook Pro is comfortably in second place. The varying result can easily put down to how each benchmark functions and compiles scores, but the big takeaway here is that the M1 still performs outstandingly well. Now we still have some benchmarks to go, but I did want to point something out. So far in our benchmarking, we've done some pretty powerful tests. I mean Cinebench, come on, that can really tax uh, the CPU in there. And in the case of our 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 processor, the fans didn't turn on even once. Not once during that entire benchmark session did these fans spin up at all. That means that the processor was still able to stay cool enough just passively 
to run at its best performance without having to be throttled back by heat. It is incredible. And the thing barely got even warm. In fact, we pulled out a thermal gun, we were measuring this thing, and it barely even got up above 90 degrees. When we had this on our lap, it was still comfortable. We had no issues with this feeling too hot at all. Comparing it to maybe our 16-inch MacBook Pro, our 16-inch MacBook Pro turned those fans on pretty quick. <clears throat> Comparing this to our 16-inch MacBook Pro, our MacBook Pro 16-inch turned on those fans pretty quickly in some of these tests, and it got very warm, much, much hotter than the M1 version of this machine. Now, let's go on to our next benchmark, the Affinity Photo benchmark. Affinity Photo Benchmark uses the professional level photo editing software. As an image manipulation tool, it can put hefty demands on the processor as well as relying on the GPU and metal to accelerate the processing of some tasks. And as it also concludes a benchmarking tool in this latest version, it works natively on Intel and the M1 processor. Considering what we saw with the 13-inch MacBook Pro M1 in our Geekbench scores, it is no surprise that it once again wins above everything in the single core test of Affinity Photo. It has a wide margin, 487 points above its nearest rival, which only managed a 304. The next version of Affinity Photo focuses solely on the GPU, ignoring the CPU completely and really relying on that GPU. Now normally this would be a big win for any Mac with a discrete GPU, but in this case we saw some pretty stellar performance from Apple's own chip. While the M1 still cannot compete against the 16-inch MacBook Pro, which pushed its lead forward to 10,695 points, the M1 single integrated GPU managed to keep the 15-inch MacBook Pro's pairs Radeon Pro 5080 X and the Intel UHD graphics 630 at bay. On the combined content scores, the M1's GPU managed to score the highest for a single GPU, beating all discrete based versions by a hefty margin once more. Its score of 7,847 is 34% better than the 16 inch MacBook Pro's second place result, which again is quite a lead over the pack. So the last thing that we wanted to test is a video export test. And at the same time, we're gonna be using our thermal thermometer to measure the thermals on this machine. We're gonna be checking the top casing right here at the back, as well as the bottom casing for the hottest temperatures. We've compared this to our 16 inch MacBook Pro, but we're also gonna be comparing this video export to our iPhone and our iPad, just to see how overall we're doing on these high end uh, 4K video exports. So settings are pretty much the same across the board, and we're using iMovie across each device, which has been updated and optimized for Apple Silicon. And as we used our thermal thermometer and ran this benchmark, it took our MacBook Pro with the M1 processor four minutes and 22 seconds. And that was with the Intel and the regular version because it is relying on metal, which does tap right into the GPU. So we had great performance there. And our 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1, it got up to 97 degrees at its hottest. And the fans again, didn't even turn on. Whereas our 6 inch MacBook Pro, it got up to 107 degrees very quickly. The fans turned on almost right away and they took quite a while before they kicked back off after the test was completed. I think that says a lot. The fact that it still was able to export in only four minutes and 22 seconds and the fact that it didn't get very hot even doing something as a high-end 4K video encoding. Like I said, we compared the 13 inch to the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So it's a 16 inch MacBook Pro with a 2.9 gigahertz i9 processor with 32 gigs of RAM. And it took six minutes and 22 seconds to export that video. That is 30% more than it took, well, 50% more than this machine took to do that export. That says quite a bit about that video encoding process. And our iPhone here, it is still chugging away and we're at about four minutes and I'm only about halfway through this thing. So that says, even more about this machine, the fact that it can export that 12 minute 4K video in only four minutes and 22 seconds. I think that is pretty dang impressive. So my iPhone has just finished the export process of our 12 minute 4K video in the highest quality possible. We did it here on uh, our iPhone 12 Pro Max and of course on 13 inch MacBook Pro and our iPhone took 754 to get that done. So 754 on our iPhone, that 2.9 gigahertz core i9 processor of the 16 inch MacBook Pro 2019, that took six minutes and 22 seconds and just over four minutes for our 13 inch MacBook Pro with that M1 chip. So what do you guys think? Honestly, we are incredibly impressed with the way this machine performed. It's absolutely amazing. We're comparing things up to a freaking Mac Pro 
And in single core tasks, this thing is winning. Using this compared to my Mac Pro feels incredibly zippy and speedy. For everyday tasks, this thing is the one to be. If I'm doing anything other than a video render or something, uh, compiling stuff in Xcode, anything like that, I would be preferring to use this 13 inch MacBook Pro. And remember, this is Apple's first try. This is their first processor for a Mac, the M1. Just imagine what the M2 is gonna look like or anything that's meant for more on the high-end side. When you're looking at the 16-inch MacBook Pro, you're looking at maybe in a higher-end iMac or an iMac Pro, even the new Mac Pro that has been rumored to run an Apple Silicon. I cannot wait to see what that is going to look like because this is an incredibly powerful machine with, even though it has fans, we struggled to get them to even turn on and it stayed incredibly cool when they did turn on. This is just an amazing machine overall, let alone the MacBook Air that should still get close to the performance of this machine. And we've only been testing it for a few days now, just a handful of days under a week. And we just cannot believe how incredible this machine really is. Stay tuned for the full review coming very, very soon. Otherwise, let me know what you guys think of the 13 inch MacBook Pro over on Twitter at Andrew underscore Otherwise, let me know what you guys think of the new 13-inch MacBook Pro with M1 processor over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you want to grab one of these for yourself, we've already started compiling the best deals and included them down below in the description.